Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And today is Sunday. Hurrah! And it's not just a regular Sunday. It is Passion Sunday, uh, which means that we are now two weeks away from the Feast of the Resurrection of Jesus Christ. Next week is Palm Sunday. Uh, today, Passion Sunday, you'll see more of the liturgy begin to be pared down. Uh, we will remove the glory be to the Father, to the Son, the Holy Ghost. Uh, that disappears from the liturgy. Uh, and you will notice that the crosses in the church are now veiled. Uh, so the tradition, you know, we started back with the pre-Lenten Sundays and then the Lenten Sundays and now the Passion Tide. These last two weeks are known as Passion Tide. And so it's important for us uh, to kind of think of the ways in which we are heading towards the cross, and the liturgy is one of the ways that we show that. Uh, I thought this morning we would go ahead and take a look at the lesson that's assigned for morning prayer, uh, which is our 730 service here at St. John's. Uh, for morning prayer, the second lesson is from the first letter of Blessed Peter to uh, the community at large. It will be at the fourth chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. Beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which shall try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if the first begin with us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of Christ? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Okay, so again, here's one of those, oh, you mean this is good news, Father? Uh, Jesus promised us a cross, right? If you do not take up your cross and follow him, you cannot be his disciple. Uh, and so here's St. Peter reiterate the same thing. And we know exactly what will happen to St. Peter. He himself will be crucified uh, in Rome. He'll be crucified upside down because uh, he didn't want to be crucified in the same way as his Savior. He didn't feel himself worthy of that. How to ask that for uh, humility. But here's the big reality. The reality is, is that the, well, the word of God is great news for those of us who've received it with joy and who want to receive it, who want to grow in grace, who want to know the Lord more. Those who hate him, those who would rather worship their own sin and hold up their own sin as more important and worship their own egos, or worse, worship a false God who are offended by the good news of God in Jesus Christ, they will persecute you, right? They will belittle you, they will demean you, or worse, but as St. Peter reminds us, we can use this to glorify God. It becomes a witness. It strengthens us in our resolve and our fidelity and our love for one another and our prayers of forgiveness for those who persecute us become a vehicle not only for our sanctification, but God willing for their conversion as well. There's an old saying, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. And so we should not be surprised if we're mocked a bit for Christianity. We should be less surprised if we're mocked a lot for being Christians. And maybe, maybe we should be surprised if nobody notices, right? We should be Christians in love and charity, not, not, as, not lauding it over on people, but in invitation to join this happy band of followers of Jesus Christ. So today for Passion Sunday, 7.30 morning prayer. 8 o'clock Holy Communion, 10 o'clock Holy Communion, and 5.30 evening prayer with the opportunity to receive communion as well. And God willing, we'll see you today in church. God bless you.